Hey everybody, it's The Van Show, and today we're talking to my friend, Mary Mancusi. Say hi, Mary. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. All right, now, Mary, I'd like you to take one minute and tell us um, as much about you as you can. All right, can you do that? One minute? 60 yes, yes, seconds? I, I'm okay. gonna stop talking now and just let you do it. <laughs> uh, hey everyone, I'm Mary Mancusi, and I'm an Austin author, I can say that, uh, <laughs> and I write uh, books for kids and teens, uh, sometimes for adults too, but uh, mostly kids and teens, and I love sci-fi fantasy type stories. Mm. This is my newest book, it came out with Disney in last fall, and it's called The Camelot Code, The Once and Future Geek. And um, in this story, basically, uh, King Arthur, young King Arthur, before he pulls the sword from the stone, he accidentally time travels to our time. And while he's there, uh, he Googles himself and he finds out his destiny and realizes it doesn't work out so well for him. And he doesn't want to go back. So he decides instead he's going to stay in the 21st century where we have like indoor plumbing, flush toilets, you know, uh, pizza, football, video games, all the good stuff. And uh, unfortunately, because of that, the time continuum goes out of control and everything's all messed up. So now it's up to Stu and Sophie, our 21st century gamer geek kids, with the help of Merlin, to go back in time and uh, fix everything. So that's basically the story of the Camelot Code. So you're an author. Yes. Were you born an author? Did you come out just going like, I'm, I'm writing. Here we go. Publish <laughs> maybe, me. Maybe I wasn't born an author, but I always loved telling stories. And even before I could pick up a pen, I would dictate the stories and make my mom write them down. And I would draw all the pictures. Of course, yes. And so I always loved that kind of thing. And when I could write, I did write. I, I, I kind of ripped off a lot of stories. Maybe they call it fan fiction now. You know, like it was like <laughs> Nancy Drew, but like, I don't know, Katie Crowley, you know, like, the, but you know, girl detective. And so I, I, I felt like imitation is a sincere serious form of flattery and that's where how I got started and then when I got older I started telling my own stories. Wow and then so so at what point were you like you know what I think I can make a living writing? Well it took a while uh, and actually I had a full-time job in TV news. Um, I'm an Emmy award-winning TV news producer that was my big time job uh, but I always loved writing on the side and I got my first book published while I was working in TV news still and uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough money to quit my day job. <laughs> and so I had to keep working two jobs. And so I would wake up really early in the morning and I would write. And then sometimes on my lunch break, I would write. And then at home, I, I, and I just was like this complete nerd. And you know, anytime I had some free time, I would work on my books. And when we moved to Austin uh, from New York City uh, about nine years ago, I was able to finally write full time. And I love it. It's like you get to make up stuff for a living. You claim to be a Disney ninja? <laughs> Can you please explain to us? I didn't realize Disney employed ninjas. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, Ninja is sort of behind the scenes, remember. So I write for Disney, obviously. Uh, this is my publisher, but I've always been a Disney fanatic. In fact, I used to live in Orlando for a time when I was in my early 20s. And uh, we would go to Disney every weekend because we had annual passes and no other money. So we would just <laughs> go to Disney and hang out there every weekend. And I just love it. It's, such, it's something so magical there. And now that I have a daughter, she's eight, uh, we get to go and I get to experience it as a mom. So it, I, just, I just love the Disney magic. And I know everything about the parks. If you want to go to Disney and have a good time and not wait in a lot of lines, I'm the girl you got to talk to. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've heard uh, that there's there's this like tunnel system underneath Disney the World. The doors. Yes. That's a real thing. It is. I actually got to see it because I went on a oh. behind the scenes tour and they take you down into them and it's Whoa. really cool. It's because they built uh, Disney World on the second floor basically because Florida is a swamp. They can't dig under. So the first floor is actually these utility doors which you think are underground, but they've really just built it up. And so when you're walking through the Magic Kingdom, you're actually on the second floor. You claim that you are into cosplay. Yes. Now, what's your favorite costume you've ever made? So I really like one that I did that was a mashup of Princess Belle from Beauty and the Beast and uh, Pikachu. What? From <laughs> Pokemon. So it was Bellachu or uh, <laughs> Pika Belle. I don't know which way you want to do it. It works either way. But uh, they're both yellow. And so I had a big bell ball gown and I had uh, Pokemon like ears and a tail and ah. I had little Pokeballs sewn into the dress so that's amazing it was really fun so, so do you do you make your own costumes I do um, I, I, I work with my mother-in-law actually who's a really great seamstress so I do a lot of the crafting part and the design and she does some of the sewing because I'm not a, an actual seamstress uh, so we kind of work together on them and my husband helps out too he's actually a good sewer himself how cool. And then where do you display these costumes? Like, uh, do you go out and, and on the town, like, hey, I just it's the weekend. The yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> uh, I usually go to a lot of sci-fi fantasy con cons anyway because of my work and, t and books. And um, so Dragon Con, for example, in Atlanta every year, I go to that one. We do a lot of cosplay there. Very cool. Goodbye. Goodbye.